subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button people have to live in in unity we are still in transition civil society has been decimated of course we rely on media and i think the government has not done enough the international community has failed to respond no place in the world is perfect the yoga event is held here severe injustice and they should be stopped we should raise our voices condemn this uh, brutal act Hello viewers welcome to Newsweek South Asia a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations let's begin with the headlines first Indian security forces thwart terrorist attacks in Jammu and Kashmir Amit peace initiative Afghanistan continues to face deadly terror attacks and Pakistan spy agencies collaborating with Rohingya armed groups to create instability Pakistan sponsored terrorists continue to create mayhem in India's Jammu and Kashmir however the indian security forces are successful in foiling their attempts of creating instability in the union territory which is peaceful since the abrogation of article 370 Let's see how the Indian security forces are countering these dreaded terrorists to maintain peace and tranquility in Jammu and Kashmir. Scrapping of Kashmir's special status under Indian constitution on August 5, 2019 has rattled Islamabad. It has hurt Pakistan's anti-India propaganda in the Kashmir Valley. Unfortunately, Pakistan backed terrorists continue to infiltrate into Jammu and Kashmir and are trying to target civilians and the security forces. The people in Kashmir Valley are up against these terrorists and are helping the Indian security forces to crack down on terror hideouts. In recent days, at least 6 terrorists belonging to different Pakistan-based outfits were neutralized in different operations launched by the security forces. They were belonging to terrorist organizations like Hizbul Mujahideen, Lashkar-e-Taiba, and Jaish-e-Mohammed, which are active in the Kashmir Valley. Large quantities of arms and ammunition were also recovered from the encounter sites. Our security forces are there, still on top, and any such incident which these terrorists are trying to create mayhem will be met with uh, definite action in which these terrorists will be killed. This should be a message for all those people who are still holding on to the guns and listening to Pakistan's dictates that now the time has come to leave the guns, surrender and come back to the mainstream. Jammu and Kashmir has faced decades long violence perpetrated by Pakistan. To maintain peace and development, the government of India has given a free hand to its security forces to eliminate terrorists operating in the union territory. Experts believe that Pakistan is playing the religion card to win solidarity of the Kashmiris, a Muslim dominated region, but the malicious designs of Islamabad are well exposed. Locals, Kashmiris also do not support uh, Pakistani terrorists as much. That is why you see the number of encounters and number of uh, terrorists that have been killed. Hurriyat has lost its traction. So Pakistan has to understand that Pakistan Uh, will never get Kashmir. Kashmir कभी नहीं बनेगा Pakistan. That uh, is to be understood very clearly by Pakistanis. Pakistan is not only instigating violence in the Kashmir Valley, but is continuously violating ceasefire at the line of control. The aim is to help terrorists easily infiltrate into the Indian territory and also damage villages along the border. Residents in Pooch district of Jammu and Kashmir have been living in constant fear. due to frequent firing along the border from Pakistani side
बहुत ज़्यादा डर है हमारी एक सिस्टर की डेथ हो चुकी है और तीन पाकिस्तान की फायर से और तीन जो हैं मेरी मदर और छोटी सिस्टर जख्मी और हमारे मकान को बहुत नुकसान पहुंचा है इसलिए मेरी यही सरकार है कि पाकिस्तान को ऐसा नहीं करना चाहिए क्योंकि जो जितना जुल्म और सितम कर रहे हैं हर बार और हर वक्त जब फायरिंग होती है तो फिर इंसान बेबस हो जाता क्या कर सकता है इंसान Pakistan occupies a large part of Jammu and Kashmir since 1947 and misuses the territory by providing training to different terror groups. It is believed that training to these terrorists is being provided by Pakistani army and spy agencies, the ISI and military intelligence. On 29 September 2016, India conducted surgical strikes against terror launch pads across the line of control in Pakistani occupied Kashmir and inflicted significant casualties. If Pakistan fails to stop sending its terrorists into Jammu and Kashmir, more surgical strikes are likely to happen. Let's move on to Afghanistan, a war-torn country which continues to face terror attacks despite attempts to bring the Taliban to the negotiating table. Recently, when the Afghans were celebrating the Independence Day, The Taliban and other terror groups were on outrage in the country. We have a report. As when Afghans were waving the national flag to celebrate the country's 101st Independence Day on August 18, the terrorists were firing rockets at the main diplomatic area in capital Kabul. The diplomatic area and foreign embassies were closed for safety reasons. Witnesses say they heard at least four rockets land near the green zone, the diplomatic area where many embassies and NATO's headquarters is located. The attack came at a time when peace talks between the Taliban and the Afghan government has hit another roadblock. Intra-Afghan talks have been postponed for an indefinite period after Kabul suddenly halted the release of the remaining inmates. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani said, that they would not release the remaining 320 prisoners unless the insurgents free the captured Afghan soldiers. Meanwhile, few more countries like France and Australia have also urged Kabul not to release these prisoners as they have been convicted of serious violent attacks on foreign citizens. Afghanistan has already released about 80 of the remaining 400 Taliban militants after the recommendation of traditional lawyer Jirga Consultative Assembly paves the way for the long delayed process. But the constant seesaw happening on the question of prisoner release has once again shown that achieving a negotiation with Afghanistan is not an easy task. I think the peace talks are going nowhere. And fundamentally they are going nowhere is because of ideological differences between what the Taliban want and what the Afghan government needs. What the Afghan Taliban ne- wants or desires is a Sharia controlled society. Whereas the Afghan government has worked very hard, uh, especially supported by the United States and the West, to create some sort of a democracy. Now the prisoner swap, the Americans may actually pressurize the uh, Afghan government to continue with the prisoner swap. But ultimately, even if the Americans leave or they don't leave, an uh, intra-Afghan dialogue is not going to succeed. And if the Americans force the Afghan government to go in for it, at some point of time when a joint government is formed between the uh, present Afghan government and the Afghan Taliban, the Afghan Taliban will take over. Peace still looks an elusive dream in the war-torn nation as the scale of violence has significantly increased since after the US Taliban peace deal signed in Doha even after reaching a closer to peace deal with Kabul the Taliban has not put a halt to an all out offensive on the battleground afghan security forces and civilians are being killed on a daily basis besides the Taliban a large number of terror groups are operating in afghanistan 
with the constant support of neighboring Pakistan. Pakistan is not only providing training and finances to these terrorists but is also creating new terrorist groups to continue unrest in the war torn nation. There is an apprehension that amid the US departure followed with a possible covert support from the Taliban, other terror groups like Islamic State and Al Qaeda will grow dreadful and fearless. I think a mistake has already been made by the Americans talking to the Afghan Taliban, which has given them legitimacy. Now they consider themselves the legitimate government and they consider the Afghan government as being illegitimate. So uh, Afghan, the Afghan Taliban will do everything in its power to get back into power. Nearly two decades of war with the Taliban have left nothing but scars, sorrow and devastation. The country gained independence from British colonization 100 years ago, but has never really got free from the violence. Pakistan's complicity in providing training and leadership to terrorists is no more a secret. Along with harboring some of the most dreaded terrorists in its own territory, Pakistan is continuously spreading its terror network in other South Asian nations as well. A German news agency, DW, has revealed Pakistan's fresh designs to destabilize peace and harmony in South Asian region, a report. Pakistan's terror nexus is not only limited to neighboring Afghanistan and India, but has widely extended to Myanmar and Bangladesh. Several media and intelligence reports reveal that Pakistan's military intelligence and spy agency, the ISI, have close connections with small terror groups operating at Bangladesh-Myanmar border. The reports suggest that these agencies are involved in radicalizing and providing terror training to Rohingya refugees based in Bangladesh. Ataullah, the leader of Rohingya terrorist organization Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army, which is operating in the border region of Bangladesh and Myanmar, was born in Pakistan. He and other terrorists of the group were trained by Pakistan-based terror organization Tehrike Taliban Pakistan. Pakistan military is known to be training militants in Afghanistan or Kashmir. Uh, they provide this kind of uh, training to other militants also, uh, the, the militant networks uh, that are linked with the Pakistan military. So that's why uh, there could be a very strong linkage between uh, uh, those who want to do militancy in Myanmar and those who want to get trained uh, to come to Pakistan. And then there's another reason, uh, which is basically that uh, there's a large population of Rohingya uh, refugees in uh, uh, Karachi, uh, the southern port city in Pakistan, and uh, these uh, Rohingya refugees have been living there for many years, uh, and some of them have gone towards uh, militancy. Uh, we do know that one of the movement's leaders in uh, Rohingya, uh, he was uh, living in Karachi for a very long time, and he he. Uh, has been uh, he has linkages in Karachi so definitely there are very strong linkages between Pakistan uh, and Myanmar when it comes to uh, uh, the refugees uh, and then definitely the militancy after the deadly crackdown by Myanmar's army on Rohingya Muslims in 2017 a large number of them have migrated to Bangladesh and India Pakistani agencies have taken advantage of the crisis and developed ties with Rohingya extremists through Bangladeshi terror organization Jamaatul Mujahideen, which was responsible for carrying out Dhaka Cafe attack in July 2016. According to intelligence reports, ISI has already provided Jamaatul Mujahideen with a first installment of $117,000 that was funneled through Saudi Arabia and Malaysia for the training. Pakistan's uh, ISI has links, has developed links with certain sections of the Jamaatul Mujahideen. And pa ISI has also developed a very good network in the coastal district of Cox's Bajar, uh, where you have the majority of the Rohingya refugee camps. And as you might be aware, the government has already banned the entry of many NGOs uh, into the refugee camps because they were found engaging in suspicious activities. So Pakistan's design would certainly be to have a greater influence in Bangladesh, curtail India's role 
and uh, if possible use Bangladesh as a launch pad for terror attacks in India in the future. Experts say that Pakistan, which has failed miserably at subverting peace in India's Jammu and Kashmir, is finding a third country a more viable alternative to challenge India. It has now become difficult for Pakistan to keep its cross-border terrorism activities in Kashmir a secret. Thus, it is trying to create new terror fronts in Bangladesh and Myanmar to create chaos in India's northeastern region, which is not peaceful after years of insurgency. Pakistan, it is, they would like to avenge, they would like to take revenge on India. Since the western uh, of the our Indian northwest, Pakistan, the particularly the LOC area, Indian security forces has uh, quite beautifully they have blocked. They have now planned and uh, my, uh, they have now planned and they have already established an ISI their base in in the in Bangladesh. Now not only the Pakistan now that China also definitely has come out openly and overtly to go against the India. Now the Pakistan is seeking, Pakistan is becoming, they feel themselves that they are more powerful with the, with the support of the Chinese and they will definitely, they will try and there is every possibility in the north is many states, some of the hardcore people or the ISIs, their agent or who have been uh, rather uh, recruited under the Al-Qaeda or their others, so many other ISI agents are very actively in the north. Insurgency in India's northeast has always relied quite heavily on external support. And the external factor in the form of Pakistan's terror infrastructure is playing a critical role in the attempts of reviving terrorism in the region. Pakistan army generals who are at the helm of forming policies against India must realize at this point that when all of its plans are being foiled and terrorists are being killed, their strategies have proven to be counterproductive. Moving on, a new threat is emerging in the name of Death Squads, a group of criminals and radicals who are flourishing in the shadow of security and secret agencies all across Pakistan. These Death Squads are assigned to eliminate political activists, intellectuals and even civilians who are raising voice against state atrocities and human rights violations. We have a detailed report. उन्होंने हमें कहा कि हम आपको पिशावर मर्दान और कोयटा में खुफिया दफातर बनाकर देते हैं और आप गद्दारों और मुल्क दुश्मनों के खिलाफ काम शुरू कर दें जो लिस्ट मुझे दिया गया था उसमें ज्यादातर अपराध का ताल्लुक खैबर पख्तूनख्वा से था और वो सब पश्तून थे जिसमें जिंदगी के हर शोबे से ताल्लुक रखने वाले अपराध के नाम थे जिनमें कुछ सहाफी हजरात के नाम भी शामिल थे This shocking revelation by former Taliban commander Ehsan Ullah Ehsan in an 11-minute audio clip is evidence proving about that squad operated by Pakistani military intelligence in the country. It comprises surrendered terrorists from various groups including Jaish e Mohammed and Ehsan Ullah's former group Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan. The objective of these death squads is to eliminate individuals whose names have been selected and compiled by the Pakistan Army. These individuals are regarded as anti-state by the Army and hence are chosen to be assassinated. They have now made it very, this practice very perfect. So you will have death squads targeting Pakhtun, uh, Pakhtun uh, activists, uh, political leaders, student leaders, journalists, etc. Any movement towards the right of the Pakhtuns, once it starts becoming popular, you have middle-level uh, people being kidnapped, being threatened and so on and so forth. Ehsan Nullah Ehsan, spokesman of Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan, has escaped Pakistani custody earlier this year. Ehsan, a spokesperson, claimed the group was responsible for shooting Malala Yousafzai 2014 Wagga border suicide attack and other terror attacks in the South Asian country.
when he was persuaded to surrender, he became part of Pakistan's death squads. In fact, he's made an uh, announcement recently that he has a list of people, journalists, which were targeted for killing by the Pakistani army. So, if he has escaped, Pakistani army says he escaped during an operation, which makes it very, very clear that he was operating with the Pakistani army. There are several death squads operating across Pakistan under the patronage of security forces and secret agencies. They are even found engaged in heinous crimes in Balochistan, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Sindh provinces. On May 26, members of the death squad attacked a family in Balochistan's Makran area. They shot dead Malik Nas and seriously injured her four-year-old daughter Bramsh. The Baloch condemned the incident and organized an extensive campaign in Pakistan and other parts of the world to condemn the heinous crime being committed by these dead sports. They demanded justice for Bramsh. Baloch community in United Kingdom uh, strongly condemned the Pakistan military's action in Balochistan and its back state death squads. Uh, as Everyone is aware that Pakistan Army has given a uh, clean check to those uh, death squad members to go in Balochistan, in different parts of Balochistan and do their heinous crimes against humanity. Political movements are on rise in Pakistan where activists and intellectuals condemn atrocities being committed on the people by state and non-state actors. A large number of political activists and intellectuals who are raising voice against the government and security agencies are being targeted by these death squads. They are engaged in kidnappings and murders to silence the voices of dissent in the country. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Shreya Savijay signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.